Now, let's say you have a triple bond and a double bond. Well, I'm going to assume I am pronouncing this correctly because I never in my career have never encountered one of these compounds, but it's a portmanteau, portmanteau of the N in the I ending. So the way we're going to name this, same way we've always named it, find the longest chain in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is your hept prefix. You're going to have an EN and a YNE. So your EN is your double bond, your YNE is your triple bond. So this is a hept ene -ine. Before this, we're going to have two numbers. First number is the triple bond. The second number is the double bond. Why are we doing this? Relatively speaking, the triple bond is going to be more reactive than the double bond, so we need to prioritize the position of the triple bond first. So, if we do have this in I, we're going to start by numbering the position closest to the triple bond. So this is 2, 4, hept in I. Now, we also need to name any branches or halogens. So in this case, we have your poro and your bromo. So chloro here is four, bromo here is five. We're not going to bother about trying to minimize the numbers because the triple bond is going to set the starting position. What else is a nightmare about this? Remember, we also have to designate EZ configurations when we're dealing with, with double bonds as well. So using your con ingold priority rules. Chlorine, chlorine opposite in this case, they're int gain. So this is E, five, bromo, four, chloro, two, four, heptene, I. Name of this compound. I know it's a nightmare scenario, but honestly, there is a methodology to it. So biggest issue with these naming these types of compounds. First of all, don't forget your EZ cis trans. The second, okay, three issues. Se second, your first number is going to designate the position of your triple bond. You want to minimize this number. And also your ending, E-N-Y-N-E, N for the alkene part, and Y-N-E for the alkyne part. 